What's going on everybody, it's your boy, it's your boy. First thing first, thank you guys so much for clicking on the video. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Now, today's video, I figure I'd make something in regards to Okinawa, Japan, since I am stationary. I've been here for almost two years now. I figure I'd create a video to, you know, to tell you guys and to teach you guys about life in Okinawa, Japan, like the things that they really don't tell you guys. So throughout this video, I'm gonna express everything and keep in mind all of this stuff that I'm gonna tell you is coming from my, like my observation and my opinion overall. It's not, it's probably not gonna be the, you know, the same opinion as everyone else. But first thing first, let's go to get it to the first subject, um, and that's the weather, the weather. You get two weathers here, two, one, two. You either get hot and humid or you get rain. And that's all you get. Like there's no in between, there's no cool days, there's no, you know, all these other days, like you're gonna get hot and humid or you're gonna get rain, it, that's, that's it. Why, because this is a tropical island in Southeast Asia, right? It's uh, probably, you know, not that far away from the Philippines, it's probably only two hours north of the Philippines. So if you guys have ever been to the Philippines, you know the Philippines is hot and humid. The same thing applies here. So it's just, it is what it is. It's something that I have to grow used to. Me being stationed in California for five years, it's like dry heat, which is totally different from humid heat. I prefer that heat over this heat any day of the week. All right, next thing that they really don't tell you guys about, and it is the traffic. Believe it or not, Okinawa is a very small place and the roads are very, very small. So you're gonna be having a lot of traffic here. And also they drive here in kilometers versus miles per hour. And the speed limit here, the average is around 50 kilometers per hour. And that's like 30 miles an hour, right? That's like the average speed on the entire island. So, you know, I like, for instance, I work around 13 miles from work and it takes me upwards of 35 to 40 minutes to drive 13 miles to work. You know, that doesn't take that long in America. If, you know, if it was in America, well, that would probably like only be like a 15, 20 minute drive. But out here, since the speed limit is so low, you know, you have to abide by all of that. You don't want to get caught speeding out here because there is a fine you guys have to pay and you get points deducted, all of that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the traffic, get used to the traffic. If you guys come from a duty station to where there's not much traffic, get used to the shit, all right? Um, next thing I would probably touch up on is just the society in general. Japanese people are very, very different, especially the Okinawans, right? Because they're not like Americans to where they talk a lot and they like to be in your business. Like these people out here do not care. And it's not a bad thing whenever I say that. Well, let me clarify what I mean in regards to that. They don't care, like meaning that they mind their own business, which is something I love. I love the fact that they mind their own business. If they see you dying on the side of the road, they probably won't even help you, to be honest with you. They'll probably just continue to, to go on about their business. No, seriously, um, it's just the fact that, you know, they don't talk as much. They're very shy people. They're not loud at all. They're not obnoxious. So if you guys coming from a place like I'm coming from, like California, all of those people there in California are all of those things, right? They're all of the above. So just to get here was a complete culture shock to see how nice and polite the people are versus people like back home in America or in different countries that I've been to. Um, so super chill, super polite, uh, super nice. If they don't like you, that's the thing, you will never know, you know, that's the good thing about it. If they don't like you, you will never know about that because they won't, they won't express that. They don't express their anger and emotions the exact same way um, as we are known to express our, our anger and our emotions, uh, which leads me to my next topic is the driving uh, they don't know how to drive at all I don't I don't know if it's like a <laughs> I, like, I wanted to believe that it was a stereotype at first but uh, whenever I first got here I saw all the driving schools yes they have driving schools here like a lot a lot a lot of driving schools like every day I see a driving car on the road with someone taking a test I'm not sure if that's like a mandatory thing for them to get their license out here but Holy cow, when I tell you that, you know, driving is just not one of their strong suits and, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You know, you gotta be extra car, uh, cautious whenever you're, excuse me, driving around the roads and everything because, you know, um, they have these stickers on the cars to where if they're, they're a new driver, if they're an old driver, a dis disabled driver, whatever. And nine times out of 10, if you get in an accident with them, it doesn't matter if it's their fault, you're probably gonna be at fault as well. That's how that works out here. So like, uh, if you're sitting at a red light and someone comes and hits you from behind, it's gonna be your fault. Uh, uh, some of that is gonna be your fault as well. Like, it doesn't make sense to me, but it is what it is. Um, what else they don't teach you? Uh, what else they don't tell you guys about here? Oh. Um, 
I would probably say the travel. The travel is probably one of the things that I didn't know about before getting here. And the fact that yes, you're in Southeast Asia, you have all these countries around you. You can travel to all these countries for dirt cheap because they're so close. So for instance, you can, you can get like a round trip ticket to Tokyo or Osaka um, for like $200, like from Okinawa. So travel like on the 96, you know, you can take leave. Um, so travel is very, very convenient here. Um, you know, it sucks because COVID kind of ruined a lot of our travel plans. Uh, we had a lot of places to go, but it's starting to die down. We're gonna go to, you wanna go to Tokyo um, for my kid's fifth birthday later this year. So I'm excited about that. But travel, if you guys come out here, absolutely travel to different countries. Make sure you have a, uh, a tourist passport as well, not just the no fee passport. Get a tourist passport before getting out here. Why? Because there's a lot of stuff in Southeast Asia that you're gonna wish you, you're, you're, you know, it's, it's a lot of people who left here who wish that they can see all of those countries before they, you know, they took, took off from here. Um, another thing that, you know, they really don't tell you guys is the, the, the scenic, the beauty of this place. This place is very, very, beautiful like it's um this is probably the most trees i've seen since being home because i'm originally from georgia so uh, being in california for you know almost six years kind of like destroyed my mind because there's barely any trees out in california right southern southern california at least and getting out here and seeing nothing but green and tropical um you know uh, uh you know, forest and all types of stuff, which leads me to my next point, the bugs. The bugs out here is a different breed. So for those who are like from inner cities like Chicago and, and LA and New York and all those cities, those concrete jungles, you guys are gonna be in, in for a rude awakening whenever you guys come here because there's so many bugs here. Like this is the first time, like, well, this, this is probably my third time being on my patio. Um, since I've been here and I've been living here for almost two years. No, no exaggeration. The reason we never come out here is because there's always spiders just hanging out right around the door. Huntsman spiders and like every, they'd be looking at you. They'd be like, yo, can we come in? Like you got some need for us? Like, what's up? And you know, we, that's why we always keep this door closed. But I manned up today. I got my little bug spray. I sprayed all around the doors. I looked double check before coming out here because I really wanted to make this video out in the environment of Okinawa and not just inside of my house. So uh, with that being said, the agriculture, or not the agriculture, the architecture is very, very unique here. Um, this is Japan, but this is Okinawa. So the, uh, the way they do things here versus in mainland is, is similar, but it's a little bit different. Um, uh, expect a lot of clustered buildings in one location. Like I can't even make sense, like this building right behind me right here, this is a very tall apartment building, believe it or not. It's very tall. It's probably like 10 stories tall. There's another one right behind it. Uh, right over here, I have a, you know, these. this is all neighborhoods. This is all agriculture neighborhoods and um, apartment building right here, a house right below me and all this stuff, right? The reason I bring that up is um, I have a, a place where I got my oil change right there. Like you have car dealerships right here. You have a place to where you can fix your car right here. You have a restaurant right here below a house. It's weird. Like the way they do things here is very weird. There's like, yes, they still have like their shopping centers and places to where you have like, you know, like different stores and everything. But for the most part about it is you would never know what's in your neighborhood unless you go out and walk and actually see, um, um, you know, because there's like three different, restaurants on my street alone that look like, like normal houses but you know at night you see people eating in there you see people dining out I'm like holy shit that's a restaurant right so it's very weird that just come out here and see everything with that being said it's, it's a very small place it's a very small island believe it or not um, the roads are very small there's a lot of back roads here there's, there's more back roads than main roads here um, you know the fact that we are in Japan and they drive on the opposite side of the road and the opposite side of the car, uh, it doesn't take that long to get used to. However, it does mess you up for a little bit, especially whenever you know you're used to seeing the stop signs, you know, on the um, on the uh, right side of the road. But here in Japan, the stop signs are on the left side of the road. So when you first get here, you you looking for, like for stop signs. I ran a lot of you know I ran a lot of stop signs when I first got here. I'm sad to admit it, but I did. I apologize, but since then I've been a good driver, have never got pulled over, never got, you know, in an accident. 
right? Knock on everything to continue that streak out here. But man, it's a beautiful place. It really is. I have neighbors down here. I have my neighbor who's right next door to me. He's a very cool guy. He never talks. Every time he sees me, he always smile and waves and, and waves. He's just good people. But I'm gonna I'm surprise him with something before we leave here. I'm gonna I'm I'm knock on his door. I'm gonna read off a letter in Japanese to him and, and give him some stuff. Um, thanking him for being a good neighbor and everything. You know, uh, the people here are just very, very nice, man. And, you know, um, uh, which leads me to my next point of being nice. Uh, you also have the individuals who are not too fond to Americans, uh, the ones who protest and, and do all of that stuff. But like I said earlier, you would never know who those individuals are unless you see them out there protesting. And that's pretty much it. Like if you were in line with someone who hated Americans and who hated their guts, you would never know because they won't approach you. They won't be rude to you. They're gonna show you with respect, treat you with respect, kindness, and all of that stuff. It's it's mad weird to see that, man. Um, furniture is another big thing as well. Um, there's only a select few places that sell American furniture here. For those who are watching this video, you guys plan on coming out to Okinawa, Japan. It is highly recommended that you get your own furniture before coming out here. Not that it's a bad point, and I understand a lot of people may not know what they're moving into or the size of their homes, Japan. You know, as you, you know, you can get stuck with some, some tiny, tiny places and everything like that, right? But nine times out of ten, you know, the places that are out here, they're going to be more than enough for American furniture, right? More than enough because you have um, a couple places out here, but they're always out of stock because the amount of them, you know, service members who live out here, they go and they completely, you know, you know, it's always going to be people leaving this island. There's always going to be pe new people coming on to this island. So their business is booming. Business is booming, which is probably going to lead me to my next point about the businesses here. Uh, Japan is a weird place. Like, uh, it's very Americanized here, super Americanized here. The businesses, the majority of these businesses out here cater directly to Americans. What, do that, what does that mean? It means like the way they do things, they change it up from the traditional Japanese way of doing things to be more, um, well, how can I say it? To be more convenient to us. So you have the car dealerships out here, you have a couple car dealerships that caters directly to Americans. Um, you know, the entire process is pretty much the exact same process back home. You have a lot of um, restaurants who cater directly to Amer Americans. They serve like American type foods um, and everything like that. They try to do the small things in order to attract us for our business and everything like that, right? And, but you still have a lot of traditional business out here, like a lot of traditional restaurants. And, and that's the, probably the best part about it too. Like almost every restaurant here has an American menu. Like I haven't been to a restaurant out here yet that doesn't have an American menu. You. And if they don't have an American menu, nine out of 10, they're probably gonna have someone in there who speaks a little bit of English. Not a lot, but a little bit of English. But for the majority of it, like this is a very easy place to live at if you don't speak any type of Japanese. If you speak English, this is a very easy place to live at. Like, um, like I understand some of these Japanese people a little bit better than I understand a lot of people who live in the, in the South. It's, it's ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? It's just the fact that, <laughs> it's funny to say it funny to say that but it's true it really is true um a lot of businesses they their signs and uh logos of their art is in english uh as opposed to japanese which was very you know weird to me whenever i came out here i went to the mall it's like damn like all of the stores in the mall have english signs like i get it they're japanese stores and everything but their 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 logos and everything is in english like can the Japanese people read this? And of course they can't, right? Because it's, it's a logo. They know what the logo is for the most part. But that's something that's, you know, was very weird to me as well. And seeing all the Japanese school kids with their uniforms on, um, like each school has like a specific uniform that they must wear like for women or for for girls and for boys um as well as like their athletics i see them all the time there's tons of schools here on on this island like tons of schools i didn't realize how many schools there were on this island to did like if you drive down the street there's probably like a main road there's probably going to be two or four like two or three schools on a main road like just driving down on it like whether that's elementary middle or high school you have a lot and the fact that you know they're very well disciplined as well like majority of them walk to school take the buses um because i was told like they're not supposed to be dropped off as against the rules or something like that but i still see a lot of students get dropped off here in japan um 
uh, on my way to work in the morning and I always see them get picked up on my way um, home from work in the evening times. But ladies and gentlemen, um, hopefully I gave a lot of information in regards to that. Keep in mind that was my experience, my opinions whenever I make this video and everything. Um, let me know what you guys want to see, man. Like I, I'm only I'm only out here for a few more months before I rotate out. For those who don't know, I'm going to recruiting, so I'm going to be a recruiter. And it's it's bittersweet that I'm leaving this place a little bit earlier than when I'm supposed to leave. But you know, it is what it is. This is my calling. You know, you gotta you gotta you know whenever your calling is calling you, you gotta pick up the phone and answer it right. But until next time, though, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace.